to the Most High, Yah, our Abba, our Elohim, the one and only, the Sovereign One, the one who is just and righteous in every single one of His ways. Bless Yah for a new day. Hallelujah. So, handy dandy notebook time, so you already know what we're on for today. Hope everyone is well. I know everyone is well, because all is well with our soul, because we are the children of the Most High. Even when things aren't going according to our plan, they are always moving according to the plan of our Abba. And so in that, we have to adjust or readjust ourselves and remind ourselves that our desires are supposed to be the desires in which he has for us. And that takes a lot of responsibility on our end, but it also gives us peace on our end. Did y'all see that? I was under attack. <laughs> It also gives us peace on our end to know that we have the one true L and we can depend on him. Not only for little things like paying bills or, I don't know, keeping us safe throughout the day, but also making sure that we are taken care of mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. And when things um, seem to shift in any of those areas, we can count on him, depend on him, lean on him. For his provision and his direction in each and every way you know what i mean it's not like oh he takes care of us in this but he leaves us out back in that no our abba is in everything and in all things at all times and we can constantly and consistently lean on him and that's what he wants from us and so i just encourage you to give in to y'all a little bit more today as we get into this word hallelujah um you can tell by the title we, we answering i guess we pushing some buttons today bless y'all <laughs> So yeah, let's let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, so things in which Yah has told me to share. There is a kingdom attribute missing in the nation, missing amongst the people of Yah. There is a key kingdom attribute, a uh, key kingdom attribute, and it's missing from amongst us. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. By the title, you already know. But let's get into it. And that is the lifestyle, okay? Not the habit of, the lifestyle of minding one's own business. I'm gonna tell it again. There is a kingdom attribute, a key kingdom attribute missing in the nation, missing amongst the people of Yah. And that is the lifestyle, not the habit of, minding one's own business, okay? Business minding is a part of our existence, okay? It's a key part of our existence. It's a necessary part of our existence. It's a crucial part of our existence as a nation. But it seems to become uh, something like a lost art. <laughs> it seems to become like a lost art amongst us. So today, we are going to discuss three ways or three reasonings, right, for to mind one's own business as part of a kingdom, okay? As part of the kingdom and as kingdom, right? The kingdom of Yah is within, it's you, it's me, it's us, it's we. And so as a collective, yes, but also as individuals, as individual kingdoms of the Most High, we got to get into mind in our business. It is necessary, okay? So, reasoning one, okay? Your opinion does not matter. Does not matter in the grand scheme of things, in the little details of things, your personal opinion, our personal opinion, does not matter okay let's look at job chapter five okay and i'm going to read verses one through seven and we're gonna chit chat okay y'all hear the cicadas do y'all have cicadas where you are all right call now if there is anyone that will answer you and to whom of the kiddushim okay or the saints or the apostles or uh the wise ones will you turn for anger kills the foolish man, and envy slays the simple. I have seen the foolish taken root, but suddenly his home was cursed. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate. Neither is there anyone to deliver them. Fools harvest the hungry eats up, and takes it out of the thorn, and the robber swallows up their possession. Although affliction does not come out of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born for trouble as the sparks fly forward. Okay, so just some background information. This is Eliphaz speaking, right? It tells you in chapter four, if you go up, then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, okay? 
Eliphaz is speaking a joke. Um, as I like to say, sometimes when people are speaking, it's like, why are you talking at me? So Eliphaz is speaking at Job, right? He's not necessarily communicating with him. He's speaking at him. Okay. And so I have Eliphaz is speaking to Job based on his observation of Job's life. Okay. Eliphaz is speaking based on what his, his eyes have seen in Job's life. Okay. Over the years, mind you, he's not just speaking to Job as if uh, a spectator from his current situation. Eliphaz is speaking from a place of, oh, I've seen, I've watched you. I've watched you over the years. I've watched you over time. I know what's going on, right? Over the years and doing his current calamity. In his mind, in Eliphaz's mind, right? He not only knows Job, right? Based on the duration of his experience with Job. In his mind, I know you. I know you. I've been here with you. I, I I saw your children and your aunts, and I know you. Okay. So he feels that not only does he know Job, but he also knows what's going on in Job's life. Sometimes we assume, okay, and this is what I was just hitting at. Sometimes we assume just because we know many things. I know your mama. I know your daddy. I know your granny, your cousin, and them. Your your auntie, and them. Some of y'all, your aunts, your uncles, your baby daddy. Okay your baby mama and your third husband, okay? And so in my mind, because I know all of that, because I've been able to witness these different experiences or events in your life, so therefore I know, okay? I know. I know, you. like I said, your first baby daddy and your third husband, we know all things, okay? And so that's, we have a tendency to do that. Because, like I said, and El that's what Eliphaz is doing. Like I've seen different things in your life I've been around for different events and so therefore because of my the duration of my walking alongside you walking with you observing peeping in your window I know I know what's going on okay Eliphaz figures out in his heart that he has it all figured out concerning Job right let's go to uh chapter four he has it all figured out. Let me see. I'm going to tell you. Verse 3 in chapter 4. See, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have held him that was falling, and you have strengthened the weak knees. But now it has come on you, and you faint it. It touches you, and you are troubled. I mean, you used to, my grandma used to say, used to was the rooster to the hand came around. Joe, like, I mean, you was out here teaching us and encouraging us and the whole time you weren't walking according to what you were teaching us obviously that's what's going on in your life based on what i'm seeing you weren't telling the truth you weren't walking accordingly you didn't know what you were talking about he knew so much and oftentimes we know so much about someone else we feel like we can perceive what yah is doing in their life okay what y'all is doing to and through their lives based on what we are able to observe with our little human eye we know what y'all is doing in their life we know what y'all is saying to them what y'all is revealing to them we know that um what else uh, but how you want me to say we we know what y'all is about to do isn't doing we know we understand y'all's mind toward a person okay that's what that's what we think Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, and this is the New International Version online, the things Yah has prepared for those who love him. So regardless of what you think you know about what someone else has going on eyes have not seen and ears have not heard including yours your eyes have not seen your ears have not heard your mind has not perceived that in which yah has in store for this person these people yourself sometimes what yah has stored up so stop thinking that you have the right to get out of your audacity to say what someone else needs to do, what someone else should be doing. The only thing that needs to be done and should be doing is you minding your business. 
Mind your business. Moving on. We're going to get to reason two. Okay? Reason two why it is absolutely necessary for us as kingdom participants. Hallelujah. As the temple of Yah, why it is our responsibility to mind our own business. Reason two. It isn't about you. This is why you need to mind your business. The first reason you need to mind your business is because your opinion doesn't matter, right? Yah isn't out here saying, so guys, what do you think that we should? Your opinion does not matter, okay? Yah knows what he's doing. He's been doing what he's doing. And he forever will know what he's doing because he's our Abba. He's Elohim alone by himself, a God. He don't need nobody, okay? Second reason why get it in check, get it in order, about your own business. It isn't about you. <laughs> It isn't about you and what you feel should be going on and how you feel things should look and how you feel like they should portray and play out. And so, so, who cares what you think, okay? It isn't about you. Stop assuming. All right, now listen up. We have to stop assuming. I'm going to tell you what I learned when I was little. When you assume, you make a what out of you and who. Okay, now, stop assuming that the same lessons our Abba has taught you in your experiences, that they are the same lessons that Yah is teaching others, okay? Stop assuming that the lesson Yah taught you in your experiences are the same lessons he is teaching others in the same experience, okay? All right? Our claim to fame is, that was me and when I. Yes, because I experienced that, and when I experienced that, I learned, and I had to, and that. It's not about you. This is my walk. This is her walk. This is his walk. This is what y'all is doing in them. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. It can look like I'm talking about the same exact, but it's not. It is not the same exact. Okay? Get out of that. Oh, that was me. And so, wisdom is a powerful thing, okay? And we have to know that it is only acquired at the giving, okay, of Yah's hand. Wisdom is a powerful tool, okay? Let me tell you. Wisdom is a powerful tool. And, with, and, and wisdom is only acquired when Yah gives it. Yah is the father, the founder, the creator, the orchestrator of wisdom, okay? We got to stop assuming that it is us. That is that in, in that role, in that position, okay? The only reason we have wisdom is because Yah allows us to have it. He gives it to us. All right? It has nothing to do with what you think you know. Wisdom has nothing to do with what you think you know, how much you've healed, okay? Or what he has brought you through, all right? Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. 9 18 okay because we assume that when y'all is doing a thing in us he's doing a thing in everyone romans 9 18 therefore yah has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he hardens whom he wants to harden he gave you that lesson and that experience because that's what he wanted to give you that doesn't mean that that's the same thing that he has given so and so okay that does not mean that. Mind your business. All right. Yes, y'all told you. If it look, I was talking to my mom about this the other day. So this is kind of like an insider. If, if she catches this video, she'll, she'll understand. But y'all told you if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a what? I know somebody right now saying, it's a duck. Right. That's what y'all told you. But y'all told Sizzle it's a dog. Y'all said if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a dog. So you. Who are you to tell her it's a duck? Who are you to get mad at her and like really, it's a duck. I don't know why you keep thinking it's a dog. This is not a dog. You're not saying prayed up. You need to fast and pray because you think it. Y'all told me it's a dog. Why do I need to fast and pray about what y'all is saying to me that you aren't comfortable with? Why is that? Why is that? Okay, stop thinking you're so wise, right? Stop thinking you are so wise and holy in all things. 
stop thinking you're so wise and holy in all things that Yah is using you to interpret. No, it's not what's going on. That's not what's going on. Let's go to Romans 9, 22. Romans 9, 22. And 23 and 24. We're going to actually read all of that, okay? Because we're thinking that it's about us. That's why I say it's not about you. It's not about you. I'm proving. What if Yah, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the object of his wrath prepared for destruction? What if... So you're thinking it's one thing, but the whole time Yah is using this thing to prepare for destruction. But you in your mind, you're thinking, well, this is for his glory and 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 and, it, and the beauty of everything he's doing in your life. It's prepared for destruction. It's prepared for destruction. What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory, even us, whom he has also called not only from... This verse says the Jews, okay? Not only from the people of Yah, not only from Yashrael, but also from the Gentiles. Because, you know, we quick to say it isn't about them. We're quick to say um, they aren't included. We, we love to talk about who are the chosen people of Yah. Yeah, but what if, what if Yah is just doing all the things that he's doing with the chosen people, right? And I'm not even going to get into that because it's a lot of responsibility that come with being chosen that has absolutely nothing to do with the lip service of saying it but what if Yah chose a specific people that he prepared in advance for glory what if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to everyone to everyone the people of Yah right the chosen ones and the Gentiles alike as it says to the objects of his mercy just so he can have mercy on everybody what if you went through what you went through so that y'all can have mercy on someone else. Not so that they can learn the same lessons that you learned, but just so that he can have mercy on them. What about that? What about that? Okay. Stop thinking you are so wise and holy in all things. Why can't our immediate response to everything, everything that we think we know and the things that we know we have no clue about, why can't our immediate response and posture be prayer? Why can't it be prayer? We always have to showcase our assumed authority in the spirit. Yes, you've seen a lot. Yes, you've read a lot and been taught a whole lot. But Yah has not given you wisdom in all things. Because there, then there would be no need for him. You got wisdom in everything. Yah has called you to speak on every single thing, every topic under the sun. You got wisdom on. Now, some of us are called to that but even in that there is a submission to the most high that is required that all of us all of us aren't walking in that submission i'm gonna just be honest and keep it true all of us aren't walking in that submission so all of us aren't aren't called chosen for that level of wisdom and application it just is what it is you don't have the you don't have the tenacity you don't have the thirst the hunger for y'all in you to even get it like that not to say that you're not walking according to how he has called you to walk but there is a self-initiative that y'all can say all right i'm going to have you to cut the grass in the backyard right and that's what i have you to do it's something it's, it's a few of us that want to cut the grass in the backyard first and then just cut everybody else in the back in, in the whole neighborhood not because we are trying to eliminate Yah's lessons towards other people. But Abba, I'm so hungry for you that I just want to go. I just want to go forth for you. I want to submit and surrender to you. I want to turn my phone off for a whole week and the TV too. And I don't want to eat nothing and I don't want to drink anything because I want to be in full submission to you. There's a few of us that are called to do things like that that y'all receives because some of us will do it and y'all it's like i ain't tell you to do that that's not that's not what i hello that's not what i that's what i said wisdom and all things that's okay let's get back on track because now i'm going off y'all hasn't given everyone wisdom in all things y'all hasn't given most of us wisdom in all things okay so when you're feeling puffed up like you need to explain something like you need to correct 
someone, okay? Change your response to prayer. Why, are, why do we always have to showcase our assumed authority in the spirit? Yes, you've seen a lot. Yes, you've read a lot. And yes, you have been taught a lot. But he has not given you wisdom in all things, nor is Yah obligated to give you wisdom in all things. He said some apostles, some teachers, ten talents, five talents, okay? To some I give this and to some I... Which leads us to our third and final point. And y'all might not, you know what I mean? But I got to keep, I have to, it's my responsibility. Our third and final point for this, to, this morning, today, shut up. Shutter it up. <laughs> shut up shut up sis shut up bro shut up self okay sometimes you got to be like say yourself shut up shut up let's read james 119 james 119 says my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak all right, and I'm going to go to one of my favorite verses in all of script. I'm talking about one of my favorite verses in all of script. Across the 66, across the Apocrypha, across um, Jasher, across, what else, Abba, Enoch, across Jubilees. This right here is my. All right, so we're going to go to Job 38. I owe 38. Verse 2. And it says, this is our Abba speaking. He's speaking to Job. Or I hope he asks him, he says, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without wisdom? Words without understanding. My version says words without, the, without knowledge. You don't have wisdom, knowledge, or understanding. Why are you speaking? Why are you speaking? Who gave you the authority to direct my child? Who gave you the authority to tell my child they're wrong? Who gave you the authority to tell my child they're right? Who gave you the authority to put your mouth on anything that I'm doing? Who is this that darkens counsel? That means you, you, you are polluting counsel. You're darkening it. With words without the uh, with words without wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I'm just telling you what the word said. Okay. Why do you think you know so much? Check yourself before you what? Why do you think you know so much? Check yourself because pride and ego can creep upon you like a thief in the night. Okay. And my Abba said many things. Yah has said many things throughout his word. If you haven't read his word, if you don't read his word, you better get into it because he speaks. Two of them things I'm going to share with us right now. Okay? Okay? Two of those things I'm going to share right now. Let me find it. Romans 8 verse 9. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the Ruach of Elohim lives in you. If indeed the Ruach of Elohim lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Hamashiach, right? If you do not have the spirit of Hamashiach, and what do you mean by the spirit of Hamashiach? If you do not know who Hamashiach is, possess the same characteristics as him, walk the same way in which he walked, think, speak, act, know, like he knows, you do not belong to him. That's why it says, let this mind be in you that wasn't. So if you are not walking according to that, you do not belong to. All right now. Okay. So don't let pride and ego creep upon you and pull you away from the straight and narrow path in which Yah has called you to be on, okay? Because it'll do that. It'll do that. Experiences with our Abba sometimes can cause you to feel like, oh, I'm this and oh, I'm that because Yah has allowed and he didn't allow, okay? Grace and mercy, you better be thankful. 
because it could have been you. That wasn't for you to be puffed up. That was for our Abba's glory. And not only for our Abba's glory, but for you to show some mercy to somebody else. Don't get beside yourself and think because you're slathered in oil, which I am. <laughs> Don't think because you're slathered in oil and speaking in tongues, you're safe. You're safe. Hamashiach's blood placed us in right standing with our Abba, okay? His blood placed us in right standing with the Most High, okay? But baby, you're still responsible for your posture. Still. So in your assuming of what's going on in someone else's life, you might want to check yours. You might want to check yours, okay? Not even Mike. You for sure want to check yours. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. Let's start at verse 13. See what I was talking about. Sometimes we forget. And we get puffed up. And we start dipping and dabbing and don't know what's happening. <laughs> Verse 13, our Abba says, If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their own righteousness and do what's evil in the sight of Yah, none of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil they have done. Mind your business. Mind your business. And if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die. But they turn away from their sin, we're on verse 14, and do what is just and right. Verse 15, if they take back what they took and pledge for a loan, what they took back for their, own, for their own selves, okay? Return what they have stolen from who? Our Abba. What do we steal? Our time from him. We stole love from him. We stole patience from him. We stole our attention from him. We stole our love from him. Follow the decrees that give life. And do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. Verse 16, none of the sins that person has committed, glory to our Abba, thank you Abba, will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right. They will surely live. Mind your business. You don't know what Yah is doing. And if he has give you, given you revelation as to what is going on, stop being puffed up about that too. Actually, you should be remorseful because Yah has so, have given you insight into somebody else's life. You know what that makes you? Responsible for some things. So that should make you tread even more lightly. It's like, all right, Yah, you've given me insight. You've given me clarity. you told me what to say. you told me what to do. Like, I, every time Yah tells me, reveals to me something that's going on in someone else's life, or he gives me a message to go speak into someone else, First and foremost, immediate prayer. Because I'm just like, Abba, like, you want me to share this, okay? I'm going to do what you have called me to do because I have to go where you tell me to go and I have to say what you tell me to say. Please give me the strength and courage to say it and let it not be any of me. Remove my opinion, my, bias, my biases, my perspective, my perception. Like, let it be all of you. And I, and I do all of that and I talk to her, Abba. I even wait for a little while. Sometimes I get in trouble for waiting, but I just be trying to make sure. And then also, especially if it's a, if it's a warning, right? Because one thing about our Abba, he speaks directly to his children. So nowhere in scripture did Yah had to send a prophet or a warning or a notice to anyone who he hadn't already spoken with himself. So the fact that Yah has called me, you, us, we to go and speak to someone else to warn them. That shit make you bow your head just a little bit because it's like, I'm going into a place to a person who is choosing to ignore the most high. That shouldn't make you puffed up. Like we get puffed up and, and excited and feeling good about the wrong things, bro. Like, no, that is not, I'm sorry for you. Moving on. Oh, and, and, and we have, what, what do we like to say? I'm saying this because I love you. I'm saying this in love. Yeah, what I love is riding on a horse with the intention of judgment. Okay? 
you you you're saying you're wrapping it in love but the intention of it is judging okay the intention of it is judgment you being funny and the, and and the people of y'all the nation that we love to emphasize what we love to say it's our responsibility to correct our brother that's my brother i'm just correcting my brother or that's my sis i'm just correcting my sis that's what's up that's what's up let's let's go to matthew 7. Matthew 7 verse 1 says do not judge or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you verse 3 why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye verse 4 how can you say to your brother let me take the speck out of your eye. Let me tell you what you should be doing. Let me tell you what you could be doing. Let me tell you what's best for you. Let me tell you how you wrong. Let me correct you. Let me show you. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. When all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Y'all telling us to mind our business all throughout scripture. Y'all know that, right? And we love to say, oh, we're a kingdom of priests. It's our responsibility to judge the nations. Yeah, but how can you judge a nations when you ain't moving right yourself? And if and if you're not there yet, you know what I mean? Because I know some of us aren't to the point where we understand all scripture script. And we let's let's do it then. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus 21. 20 verses 23 to 25 said but if there is serious injury okay you are to take life for life eye for eye tooth for tooth it's our abba speaking tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot burn for burn wound for wound bruise for bruise that's are you ready for that are you ready for y'all to say based on what you do Based on what you say, based on what you think should be going on. You heard he told Job, get up and stand up like a man and get ready to face him. Based on how you acting and how you moving and how you think these things should be going, I'm going to hold, I'm a, that's what I'm going to carry. I'm going to carry it like that with you. If your correction does not encourage towards the most high, okay, and instead it leads to guilt, shame, anger, and self-condemnation, then shame on you, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Okay? Shame on you. And no, you cannot control, all right? Because sometimes y'all will send us to say things that hurt feelings, and that's fine. No, you cannot control the response. Our Abba's word corrects. Yes, it does. And sometimes correction is uncomfortable. Yes, it is. But it does not condemn or hinder. If what you are doing condemns, if what you are doing hinders, you are not doing the work of Elohim. Stop lying to yourself. Mind your business. Your best bet, our best bet as a whole, as a nation, is what? Let's go to let's let's pull it up. Philippians, you already know. Four. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, every situation, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to the most high. Let's be a people totally dependent on the wisdom of Elohim for ourselves and each other. And each other. Let's stop. Let's stop thinking that we know so much. Even when we do. Okay, you do know the answer. So what? Still pray. So what you can tell that they moving wrong, still pray. So what you know that they should be doing something else, let, still pray, still pray. And then don't pray for casino. I'm always laughing when people say, I pray for you to get a job, why? Why, why not pray for me to do y'all's will? What if y'all's will isn't for me to get a job? Why are you praying for me what you think I should be doing? Instead of praying that my eyes are open to the will of the Father. Why do you think that you know what's best for me? Why do you think that you know what's best for her? Why do you think that you know what's best for him? You have absolutely no clue what y'all created them for. You know nothing about their purpose. You know nothing about the task in which they have been assigned in this life. But yet, 
I prayed for you to get a job. I prayed for you to be healed. I prayed for you to... Don't pray for me. <laughs> if that's how you're going to pray for me, if you are praying to me, praying for me based on your understanding, based on your perspective, based on what religion has taught you, don't pray for me. I don't want it. <gasps> Did you say don't? Yes. I've told people don't pray for me. I just want to join in prayer with you. I, I'm not. I'm not because you're praying according to your opinion and you're praying according to your bias and you're praying according to your pride and you're praying according to your ego. You ain't, you're not talking, speaking to, I know who you're talking to and it's not my Abba because I know who the father of lies is and everything that's spewing out of your mouth is the opposite of truth. Truth is Abba, let thy will be done. Shalom, I love us so much. Mind your business today and mind your business tomorrow too. <laughs> and forevermore. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we just feel like we want to be so helpful. And the best help that you can give anyone, including yourself, is to trust the will of Yah. Trust in the power of Yah. Trust that He has the power and the authority to do everything that He has the power and the authority to do in our lives in our friends' lives, in the lives of our enemies. And, bro, pray. And stop going up to people telling them what they need to be doing. You have no clue what they need to be doing. Hallelujah. May the most high bless us, keep us, our children, our children's children. And may we be, lead by example. May we live lives that inspire change in the generations within our own children. Within our children, because they're on TikTok, they're on Instagram, they're on YouTube, and they're seeing the way the world it's telling them that they should live. We should be, there should be a difference in how we approach life. There should be a difference in how we speak. There should be a difference in how we think, how we act, how we eat, how we move. So that they can differentiate between truth and fact. Because there's a difference between something being true and something being a fact. Okay? Shalom.